Good evening and welcome to the Montego Bay Marine Park Thursday night happy hour and presentation. This evening we're going to mark the beginning of the lobster closed season, not something to necessarily celebrate unless you're a lobster. Um, but we're going to go through the ideas behind it, the fisheries management responsibilities involved with it, what they're trying to achieve with a closed season, and other aspects of it. So the season, the history of the season, that is in 1987, Jamaica was the only country in the region in the Caribbean with a significant lobster fishery that did not have a closed season for lobster, was not making any efforts, was not, making any, uh, was not going in any real directions towards managing that fishery. The Ministry of Agriculture, however, under Section 19 of the Fisheries Industry Act of 1975 declared, starting only in 1988, an annual closed season for lobsters. That closed season begins on the 1st of April, which was last week, and goes until the last day of June. So all of April, May, and June, uh, no lobster are to come out of the sea. Now why would you close a season for lobster? Why is it necessary? Well, originally, the only restri restrictions on lobster catch was that the harvestable s was within the harvestable size, based on Section 14 of the Fisheries Industry Act regulations, and that reads, no person shall catch and bring ashore or destroy any spiny lobster of carapace length, that means the headpiece, the headpiece length, of less than 7.62 centimeters or 3 inches. That's a really little lobster. This was and continues, this is still a regulation. And it continues to be basically, if that was all it was, an inadequate uh, regulation for a, to have a sustainable lobster harvest in the future. You can see right here, this is a juvenile lobster. Um, you can see, based on the size of the seagrass, this guy was about that long, sort of less than two inches long. And he's just a brand new little baby guy. Now, why, why is a closed season necessary for lobster? Well, studies have shown that the population is more fragile during the spawning period. Basically, you've got a female lobster with a whole next generation strapped to her belly. And if you take that one out, you're not just killing one lobster, you're killing a whole generation. So it makes sense that the, the, the population is very fragile during that spawning period. Thus, it was the most important to protect those lobsters during that time. Now, although female lobsters can bruise some 800 eggs per gram of body weight, more than 99% of those die uh, during the planktonic phase of their life before they come back down into the reef. Um, another interesting thing about that, look at this number here, 800 grams, 800 eggs, sorry, per gram of body weight. So obviously the bigger a female lobster is, the more productive it is. And within the idea of that, we again get back into the idea of a marine protected area where you can have large female lobsters with a lot of grams of body weight that produce a whole lot of eggs. Now within this though, this 99% um, death rate that's occurring already amongst those eggs, you can increase that just by handling or disturbing the female lobster. So handling, basically that means any human disturbance during the egg carrying stage will increase this, this mortality of the egg substantially. Thus, during that period when you have a lot of lobsters that have eggs, it's best to leave them alone. Even if you try and let them go again. Uh, why is a closed season necessary for lobster still? Um, adult males, during this time of year, during the breeding season, leave a sperm packet on the belly of the female lobster. As the eggs are laid, as the female lays the eggs, she rubs them against that little sperm packet and they're fertilized. And then she attaches them to little swimmerette fins, little tiny legs on the base, on, on, on the underside of the tail. Um, there she holds them until they develop, which can be, it's usually about uh, 10 weeks, so about two months. She then goes to a high point in the reef, somewhere with a good deal of current, and she shakes these little babies off into the current as the eggs hatch. The eggs and juveniles then remain in the plankton, floating around in the sea for anywhere from 6 to 12 months before they settle the bottom and start turning into a real lobster. The juveniles, as they're floating and as they're setting, settling, called puroli, they settle into some sort of a fibrous microhabitat, that being a, uh, a piece of algae or seagrass, or a branching coral, or quite often, again in seagrass areas, and on the roots of mangroves where you have a lot of algae and sponges and things. This is a very good place for them to settle out in. Now, without these nursery habitats, they call them, particularly the mangrove and the seagrass, shallow habitats, um, these juvenile lobsters are quickly eaten by predators, and really you end up with even less than one in 99 surviving, or one in 100 surviving. 
and really illegally, so looking at this, a legally harvestable sized animal of three inches, of three inch of carapace or headpiece length, maybe several years old. So it's quite an investment. This little guy here, this little guy was about an inch long, so that big, sitting again in, a, in an algal bed, a little bit of sponge down the bottom, at the edge of a seagrass area. And he's probably already been alive for at least a year, and this is only how big he is. And it's going to be a while, at least another year or two, before he's a harvestable size. Now this, April 1st to June 30, 30th, April, the months of April, May, and June, these are documented spawning periods for lobsters. This is about the time of year when the majority of breeding is occurring. You get a lot of lobsters in what they call berry, which means that the, ba the, the females are holding those bright red eggs against their bellies and the eggs are maturing. The closed season also coincides with the end of the winter tourist season when there is a drop in the demand for lobsters in the hotels and restaurants locally. And it ends, it comes to an end at the beginning of that summer season when the European tourists start coming. So it's a nice time for the lobsters to get a bit of a rest because their sailability, for lack of a better word, is diminished at that time. Now eggs laying in seasons, female lobsters may be pregnant. They call pregnant, well they wouldn't call it pregnant, they call it buried. That means that the female is holding those eggs. She holds the eggs for, as I said before, about two months against, underneath, the, underneath the tail section of the lobster. Keeps them safe, keeps them aerated, keeps them clean in order that they in order that they're able to uh, mature and then eventually hatch. Female lobsters may be buried outside of the season though, both before and after. There's actually quite a long reproductive season that occurs. The, the no-take season is just a major piece in the middle of that. It is illegal to harvest in Jamaica any buried lobster at any time of year. So anytime you catch a lobster, and if it has, if it has eggs, you need to let it go. And that makes sense from sort of a, it, just, it makes sense, aside from just being a legal matter, it makes sense. Um, if you think that you can take those eggs, cut them off, scrape them off and put them back in the sea, they don't survive. Fish eat them, things eat them. Without the mother lobsters physically protecting them and keeping them clean, they do not survive. Uh, no matter how carefully one scat scatters them back in the sea. Now a female can also just be tarred, which means that she hasn't actually laid the eggs yet, but she has completed the mating, the mating aspect of it. She has met the, met the male, the tar being the sperm packet. And it actually looks, if you take the lobster and you flip it over upside down, it looks like somebody had put uh, two little blobs of road tar on her belly. It's actually what it looks like. Um, other parts of the Caribbean, any tarred lobster is illegal.